I uh, will start this lecture with uh, completing my introduction to introduction and uh, we have to uh, consider uh, two issues. One is Gauss formula and another one is Laplace asymptotics. Uh, so Gauss formula. Uh, Gauss formula is uh, the following statement. If you take exponent uh, and consider exponent of a quadratic function. So you have here uh, some quadratic function a i j x i x j um, and coordinates here uh, i runs value from 1 to n so x super i is a vector in n-dimensional space a i j is a symmetric matrix and uh, we consider integral of this function over the entire space so uh, I write here dx um, and uh, dx is just abbreviation for the product of all uh, of differentials of all variables uh, then uh, such uh, and integration is over the entire space I uh, 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 so this is uh, we have to integrate it n times in the limits from minus infinity to plus infinity and this integral um, is computed exactly and um, the result is uh, square root of uh, 2 pi to the power n divided by determinant of the matrix A i j. This is the Gauss formula. Uh, and um, derivation is quite uh, simple. Uh, what we do uh, we uh, first of all we make a change of variables so instead of variables x i we take uh, we make some change of variables say let me put here some matrix lambda i uh, j x prime j so, uh, and uh, as we agreed on the previous lecture, uh, if we have uh, repeated in upper and low index, index, we have summation over this index. So here you have summation over j. Um, and x prime uh, j, um, uh, x prime j um, are the new coordinates. And we would like to, to make a change um, um, of coordinates in this integral. So what we do, we plug uh, this change of uh, this uh, old variables in terms of new variables, we plug into this integral and what we get integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponent minus one half a i j lambda i um, M lambda J N X prime M X prime N and uh, instead of differential if we do the change of variables you know that uh, then the Jacobian of this transformation appears uh, so uh, the Jacobian is the determinant of the matrix dx i dx prime j and uh, and then dx prime right uh, 
uh, now this uh, this Jacobian is just a determinant of the matrix determinant of the matrix lambda i g. And now let us choose uh, this matrix uh, to be diagonal, uh, to be orthogonal. Uh, the, for this uh, for orthogonal matrix, this determinant is equal to one. Uh, and we can choose, as you know, we can choose this orthogonal uh, matrix in such a way that it puts uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, tensor AIJ, this matrix uh, AIJ, uh, into diagonal form, right? Uh, so. <coughs> Uh, this integral is equal to integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponent minus one half um, and here uh, so I choose lambda in such a way that this matrix uh, takes uh, the diagonal form therefore what we have here is one half a uh, say a one one prime uh, x one prime square plus and so on plus one half uh, a n n prime x n prime square d x one prime now I uh, write in full what is um, this volume element d x n prime uh, and uh, and you see that uh, in order uh, that uh, in order for uh, um, our consideration makes sense, uh, all these coefficients a one one prime and so on a and and prime must be positive, otherwise integral diverges. So we uh, and this is equivalent uh, to say uh, that the matrix, this matrix which stands here, is positive definite. Uh, now um, and and now this uh, the integral splits into the product of integrals. We have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, exponent minus one half a one uh, one prime x one prime squared dx one prime times integral from minus infinity to plus infinity an exponent minus one half a two two prime x two prime uh, squared dx two prime and so on. So we have actually the computation of this integral reduces to computation of that uh, of this one, right? Uh, and uh, here we we can make one more change of variables, and we can set. Uh, say uh, we can put instead of x1 uh, uh, let us put x1 prime uh, equal to say y1 divided by square root of a11 prime and the same for all uh, the same for all other variables then this integral would be uh, equal to 1 divided by square root a11 prime integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponent minus 1 half y squared dy right right uh, and uh, and the same for all other integrals um, so I continue here. Uh, uh, so <clears throat> we get that this is equal to one over square root of a one one prime and so on a n n prime times integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponent minus one half y squared dy, uh, and this is taken to the power n. Um, 
what stands here, the product, what is this? Um, you see here that from our derivation, A11 uh, prime is uh, an eigenvalue of the, the matrix, say first eigenvalue, second eigenvalue, and so on. So the product of all eigenvalues is equal to the determinant uh, to the determinant of this uh, um, uh, de determinant <coughs> of this uh, matrix. So uh, what we have here is determinant of the matrix A I G. Uh, now, how to find this number? Uh, um, it, it was a very nice trick uh, uh, invented uh, 200 years ago, almost 200 years ago, by Poisson. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he um, uh, found this integral in the following way. Uh, let us do the following, say, let us, consid uh, let us consider uh, this integral Um, and uh, multiply this integral by itself. So we consider squared. Uh, we consider squared integral. Uh, and I will denote, say, uh, the variable of integration in the second integral, say, by x. Right. Uh, but this is just the same as to find double integral. Right. Um, and now uh, we have this double integral, uh, but what we achieved now the integrand is uh, cylindrically symmetric. So we uh, it has uh, uh, so it is uh, appropriate to make a change of variable to move to polar coordinates. Right, and uh, so we can set. Uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? Uh, oh, so in x y plane, we choose uh, the polar coordinates. So this is r, this is say theta, uh, then uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, then what stands here is r squared, and uh, the volume, uh, the area uh, area element is r d r d theta, right? So we get uh, we get the following integral: exponent minus one half r squared uh, r d r d theta. Now the limits of integration: oh, uh, uh, we integrate over r from zero to infinity and over theta from 0 to 2 pi. Um, and integral over r is easy to find because what r dr is differential of r squared over 2. Right? Uh, so what stands here is differential of minus uh, exponent uh, minus r squared over two. So if we uh, differentiate, if uh, if we differentiate this function, uh, we get exactly what we have here, right? And therefore, we have uh, the the integral equal to the difference of the values of this function at infinity and and zero. So this integral is equal to one. And integ uh, the integral doesn't depend on, the uh, on theta. Integration over theta gives 2 pi. So this is the answer. And uh, we see that uh, what stands here is square root of 2 pi. So we arrive at, uh, at the Gauss formula. Um, uh, the next issue to discuss is Laplace asymptotics.
<coughs> well, some people put write it in the following way: Laplace with this ap apostrophe s uh, asymptotics. But since we value very much this, uh, this statement, we can drop this part and just say Laplace asymptotics. Um, so this uh, statement uh, pertains to uh, the following integral. Suppose that we have, say, we have in some n-dimensional space, we have some region V, um, and uh, in this region, there is some function s of x. x is the point of n-dimensional space. Um, and we have an integral over region v of exponent lambda s of x dx. Um, and we need to compute this integral for the case when this number lambda is very large. Or we, one says that we are considering asymptotics of this integral when lambda tends to infinity. What is the asymptotics? And uh, the uh, Laplace idea uh, uh, was that uh, actually uh, in computation of this integral only uh, for computation of this integral for large lambda only a few points are important uh, namely the points of uh, maxima of this function uh, say if this is let it be a one dimensional integral and say this is function s of x uh, so if this uh, if, the, uh, say, uh, this function has a maximum, then in order to find the asymptotics, all what we need is to consider the <coughs> this integral in the vicinity um, in the vicinity of this point uh, of this point of maximum. If uh, there are several, uh, this function has uh, several points of maximum, uh, say. Um, uh, say uh, a function like that. But then what is important is the point, only one point, where, uh, where this function uh, takes um, its maximum value. If, uh, if this function has, uh, say, two points of maximum, but uh, but the values of maximum are the, uh, the values of maximum are the same. Then we have to take uh, to consider uh, this integral in the vicinity of this of these two points of uh, maximum. Uh, if well, what else we can uh, expect here? Say if we have uh, we have this function on some segment. Uh, we may have the situation when this is the segment, say from A to B. Uh, we may have the situation when this function uh, has um, maximum at the boundary. But then, in order to compute this integral, all that we need to do is to consider the integral in a small vicinity of this point of maximum at the boundary. But first let me uh, <coughs> uh, let me discuss uh, the situation when point of maximum is inside the region, not at the boundary. Uh, how to compute uh, this maximum? Uh, how to compute this integral? Um, uh, let us do the following. Uh, let us uh, write this integral in the following way. Exponent lambda, I write here s of x, um, and let, for simplicity, we ha the, the point of maximum is
-hmm. Thank you. So we take exponent lambda as head out of integral, and in the integral we have um, exponents. Um, lambda s of x minus s hat dx. Uh, so far we didn't, do, this is just identical transformation, we didn't do uh, any, anything, uh, um, uh, didn't uh, uh, use any assumptions. But now let us uh, take the uh, 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 Laplace idea and uh, assume that we indeed it is uh, uh, indeed enough to compute this integral only at the, in the vicinity of uh, the point of maximum. And then we can uh, replace this difference by uh, a quadratic function in the vicinity uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the point of maximum. Just we use Taylor, ex uh, Taylor expansion, right? Uh, so we can, uh, we can write that this is equal to one half um, as I, I put here comma ij this is uh, the matrix of second derivatives uh, of second derivatives uh, uh, of a function s of x at the point of maximum x i. Now, uh, let me uh, say if this is a if this is uh, uh, say the point of maximum, then let us uh, uh, let us denote the deviations from uh, uh, of coordinates from this point by y. So this uh, y would be y super i r x i minus x hat i. x hat i is the uh, max, uh, the point, point of maximum. Uh, then uh, what we have here, just quadratic function with respect to uh, uh, with respect to y. This, this, uh, this quadratic form is uh, 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 negative definite because we are talking about maximum. So actually this difference, uh, this difference is negative and this matrix is, uh, uh, is, uh, 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 is always negative and what we, we can write it in the following way. I put here the sign minus and I put he, and put here the sign minus. So the matrix, um, the, the matrix, uh, uh, the uh, minus uh, uh, ne negative uh, second of negative second derivatives is positive definite. Um, okay. But uh, following Laplace, we have to consider this uh, integral only in uh, uh, the asymptotics is determined uh, by uh, integration only in a small vicinity of, um, of the point of maximum. Uh, uh, now, uh, at this point, I, um, uh, I would mm, like to tell you uh, a story which uh, I was told by my friend who, ca who came to uh, when he uh, came to United States to teach, and he uh, taught in an engineering college. Uh, and he started uh, teaching in the same way he used to do it before. Uh, so some statement. Uh, uh, he must uh, prove some state. Uh, him, some statement appeared, which he must explain. So he start proving. Students are writing down after him. Uh, then uh, the next statement uh, appeared, which he thought he must to prove. Uh, uh, so he was proving this statement, and he looks students some smiling, look to each other. Uh, talking, uh, and when he 
uh, uh, went to uh, prove the third statement, uh, students are just laughing and one student asks, Professor, why do you prove this to us? We trust you. Uh, so, uh, at, so at this point, I, I would like uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to use that I'm talking to engineering students, and I ask you to, to trust me at, at, one, at one moment. Uh, uh, so trust me that uh, actually uh, this Laplace idea does work. Uh, it, it is actually to prove this accurately requires uh, some uh, great deal of efforts. Um, uh, and uh, but the uh, the uh, 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 the procedure is quite actually quite simple. So f the first uh, uh, the procedural uh, part is the following. First, we change this. Uh, function by uh, its expansion in the point of maximum and the second point is that if we now this function decays very fast right this is a quadratic function so uh, 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 at the point when y equal to zero uh, this exponent is equal to uh, at, at when y equal to zero, exponent is equal to one. But if y becomes non-zero, uh, then multiplied by, by large number, this the number in the exponent is is a very big negative number. So the integrand here becomes very very small, right? And the bigger uh, the this, the bigger this deviation from the point of maximum, the smaller is the integrand. And uh, therefore, we may expect that if we replace the integral over the small vicinity of the point of maximum by the integral over the entire uh, entire uh, space, uh, the, the asymptotics uh, does not change. Of course, this requires some proof, but I. Uh, um, but uh, this is the point where I ask you to trust me. Uh, and, and after, the, as soon as we do that, we can com uh, we can uh, complete uh, the uh, the derivation of the asymptotic easily, because now what we get is exponent uh, lambda s hat uh, times integral from minus infinity to plus infinity exponent minus one half lambda um, and here I write minus s comma i j y i y j dy and to compute this integral we can use just uh, we can use just Gauss formula right so the answer uh, which we have uh, uh, proved uh, a few minutes ago uh, uh, so uh, the answer is exponent lambda s hat um, uh, times square root of uh, 2 pi uh, to the power n divided by determinant uh, determinant of this matrix uh, and determinant of this matrix this matrix uh, so we multiply this matrix by lambda that means that uh, uh, lambda can be taken uh, when uh, 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 lambda can be taken out of this determinant so we have here lambda to the power n determinant of the matrix minus s comma i j and this matrix is computed at the point of maximum. So this is the leading term of the asymptotics and if we wish uh, uh, to write uh, we can uh, 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 we can uh, study what what would be the next term of the asymptotics and it turns out that this is so this is indeed the leading term and uh, the remainder is 
on the order of 1 over lambda. So for very large lambda, this is a, a very, we have a very simple way to compute this integral. Um, what changes if, uh, what changes if we uh, have, <coughs> uh, we have an integral uh, a little bit more complicated integral. Integral, say, we have here prefactor f of x, exponent lambda s of x, um, dx, and the integral, we have integral over some region v, and the uh, function s is smooth, um, function f is smooth, and function s has the only point of maximum. Uh, if we repeat the same reasoning, uh, like here, uh, you see that actually what uh, what enters, say, if we have here additional factor f of x. Again, since, uh, since exponent decays very fast, only the value of this prefactor at the point of maximum is important. All, uh, all other values of f of x uh, 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 provides uh, in essential contribution, so asymptotics in this case is f at the point of maximum times exponent lambda s hat, maximum value of s, um, and again um, uh, and again square root of 2 pi to the power n, uh, lambda to the power n determinant of the uh, of the negative, this uh, matrix of second derivatives, um, and again the re uh, remainder in this formula is uh, 1 over lambda. Uh, if we, now what happens if, say, we have the situation uh, we have the situation like this. Now we have here minus, say so minus lambda s of x dx. Uh, which point uh, produce, uh, in, uh, for large lambda produces the most contribution to the integral? Clearly, this is the point of minimum of s of x, right? Because uh, 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 just uh, just for the same uh, for the same reason. Uh, so the asymptotics in this case is we have to take f at the point of minimum times exponent. If we just repeat the same uh, the same derivation, we get here minus lambda. And now the, point, the minimum value I uh, uh, denote by this uh, symbol check, and x check is uh, the, point, the point at which uh, s uh, has the minimum value, and again uh, the same uh, square root. Um, uh, the, and of course, uh, in, in, at the point of minimum, uh, the matrix of second derivatives is positive, so we don't, uh, this, uh, this minus sign will not appear, and we have just uh, this, uh, this determinant, and again 1 plus some contribution uh, of the uh, some contribution of the order of one over lambda compared to the compared to unity. Um, another uh, uh, interesting uh, question is what happens if in the uh, if this lambda is not a, a, a real number but complex number. So what happens if we consider uh, integral of, of the following uh, 
type. We have f of x exponent, uh, say z, s of x, dx, uh, s of x, dx. And now z goes to infinity. Uh, and uh, it turns out that um, in this case, if z is a complex number, the asymptotics um, Uh, we have to specify what what it means that z goes to infinity. In z plane, if we take a z plane, then we can go uh, uh, to infinity in different ways. We can go to infinity, say, uh, we can uh, go along one path to infinity, or we can go uh, along another path to infinity. Will the asymptotic depend on the path? Uh, we choose, and uh, uh, um, and it turns out that the asymptotics does depend on the path we choose, and the answer here uh, is the following. The answer here is the following: that if if we, take, uh, if we take an angle with any, uh, so we take an angle with, uh, uh, say, any, uh, this could be as small as we wish, epsilon. And we consider, uh, uh, we consider z going to infinity along some path within this angle then uh, uh, these asymptotics remain valid, even for complex Z. Uh, and this is, uh, this is not uh, ele an elementary fact. However, if we allow Z uh, to go to infinity beyond this angle, uh, for example, if we allow Z to go to infinity say, along, uh, along uh, imaginary axis, uh, then this asymptotics fails. And there is, and, uh, uh, um, and say, if z goes to infinity along imaginary axis, uh, um, that means, say, that we, have, we consider asymptotics of the integral f of x, exponent, say, i lambda s, S of x dx. Uh, you think uh, this squeezing will uh, reduce? Um, well, let, uh, let us check it experimentally, right? <laughs> okay. All right, we'll see. Um, it, it depends also on the rigidity of my fingers. <laughs> 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 The blackboard is very good quality. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, the, the asymptotics in this case, when, say, lambda goes to infinity, um, is different. This, is, uh, this asymptotics is called the stationary phase asymptotics, because uh, in physical problems, S of x has the meaning of phase, uh, uh, of phase, and it turns out that uh, in this case, if lambda goes to infinity, not only the points of maximum enter into the asymptotics, but all points in which derivative of s of x is zero, uh, say, um, if we, in one dimensional case, uh, say, suppose we have a function uh, like this. This is our s of x, right? Uh, uh, if uh, if we don't have i here, so we have uh, um, the uh, real case, uh, uh, real parameter, then uh, then only the point of maximum is uh, is important. Uh, but if um, uh, but uh, if say we have here i, then uh, in uh, the asymptotics, uh, then. Uh, 
two points contributes to asymptotics. This one, and not only point of maximum, but also point of minima. Besides, if uh, if this function uh, say uh, uh, have uh, uh, such a point where another point where derivative is equal to zero, th uh, this point can also contribute to asymptotic. So all points in which derivative of this function is zero contribute uh, to asymptotics. But we will not encounter uh, uh, such case in, uh, uh, other, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the rest of my uh, lecture, so I don't pay more ten um, I don't pay attention to this case. At all. What what we will need only these two cases. All right. Uh, so uh, this con uh, this concludes the preliminary stuff, and now we go to real stuff. So the, ne the next issue to discuss is probability. Um, uh, we consider for definiteness, again, uh, I uh, don't like to, to be very abstract as mathematicians like to do. Uh, let us uh, um, consider for definiteness uh, a random, uh, some region in uh, n-dimensional space, again, say region V, and um, the points uh, uh, the points of this region are our elementary events. So when we choose uh, this point uh, in uh, in this region, this is uh, this is an event, and uh, we uh, consider this is elementary event, and we consider a complex event when, say, uh, the point which we choose can belong to some region A. And what we introduce is the probability of such event. And probability, uh, uh, probability uh, of this point to be in some uh, 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 region A is by definition integral over this region of some function f of x uh, dx, uh, where f of x is called probability density function. Um, this point, uh, the, the, if we take as, uh, as a set A, we take the entire region V, um, then probability of the point to be in region V is uh, is unity, uh, so uh, integral over region V of f of x dx is always is equal to one, and f of x is uh, is a real non-negative function. This is the usual way in which we introduce probability. Um, now uh, let we have uh, let we have some function of this random event phi of x. Uh, then mathematical expectation of this function phi is by definition uh, integral of phi of x f of x dx. And we may consider also uh, uh, the uh, 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 we may consider also 
the following event. Uh, probability of probability uh, that uh, the va value of phi doesn't exceed some uh, some value e. It is called probability distribution. Let, let us uh, denote it by F capital. Probability distribution of uh, fun uh, probability distribution uh, uh, of the values of this function phi. Um, so uh, this, probabi uh, this uh, probability is equal to integral f of x dx, uh, and we have to integrate over the this uh, what is this event that phi that the uh, that this function phi does not exceed e right uh, and this integral can be uh, uh, conveniently written in terms of the step function which we have introduced uh, at the second lecture uh, so we can the same uh, integral can be written as integral of, we take step function, take the difference theta minus phi of x and integrate it over x, oh, sorry, uh, f of x, f of x dx, integrate, and we integrate this function over region v. Um, and this is uh, the way how step function penetrates in, uh, in our consideration. what we see, that computation of probabilities uh, is uh, just computation of integrals. So this is, if uh, we uh, start, uh, uh, if our aim is to find some probabilities, what we do, we compute integrals. So this is pure analytical thing. Uh, and we will proceed uh, uh, um, uh, we will proceed in, uh, in this way. We will compute probabilities of some events, and this is nothing but computation, uh, computation of integrals. So this is quite standard stuff. Uh, so from pr what uh, remains from probability, only this, uh, these definitions, right? Uh, why probability? Uh, why uh, this makes some uh, physical sense? Maybe we'll discuss um, that um, a bit later. Um, okay, now uh, in our, uh, the uh, um, uh, in this is too dry. Uh, it it was a wet somewhere a wet one. Another important notion is statistical independence. Uh, suppose that we have <coughs> Random events uh, x uh, uh, the our event is a couple x and y. So actually we are working in a larger space. Uh, if say x n dimensional vector, y m dimensional vector, then we work in m plus n dimensional space. So we consider the case when our uh, our event is a couple x and y. To describe probability density, we have to um, to uh, uh, probability density now becomes a function of two variables x and y. And we may cons 
uh, we may consider uh, so-called uh, con uh, conditional probability. Uh, condi uh, suppose that uh, y belongs uh, uh, to some set, y is a point of some set B. Uh, and we are wondering what would be the probability, uh, so we know probability density, uh, joint probability density f of x, y, and we are wondering what would be the condi conditional probability uh, of x, and the condition is uh, that um, y belongs to uh, uh, some set b. By definition, uh, this conditional probability, it depends on b, this is a function of x. Um, uh, by definition, it is equal to integral over b f of x y dy divided by um, uh, uh, so we have here some function of x, and now we have to normalize it in such a way, uh, in such a way that uh, this conditional probability, the integral of over uh, all x, uh, must be equal to one, right? So we have to introduce here some factor which normalizes, uh, which normalizes this function, and what uh, it is going to be, we, we have to put here double integral uh, f of x y dx dy uh, and y over y we integrate over b over f for x we integrate over region v right so this condition uh, then this condition is uh, satisfied indeed uh, and now we come to uh, a very uh, uh, important notion, and maybe the central notion of probability theory, statistical independence. The two ev events, x and y, are called statistically independent if this conditional probability doesn't depend on the choice of this set B. So whichever set B we, uh, uh, whichever set B we choose for the second variable y, this conditional probability will be the same. And this is possible only in one case. If, uh, uh, if this joint probability of two events is equal to the product of some function of x times some function of y, right? And uh, um, if we, um, let us see, if we plug it in here, uh, uh, let, uh, let me continue it here. Uh, if we plug it in here, what we get? Integral over b f of x g of y dy divided by integral over v integral over b f of x g of y dy and you see that since this, uh, uh, the integrand here is uh, the product of uh, two functions, uh, we can, uh, this is equal to f of, I can take f of x out of the integral. I get f of x integral over b g of y dy. And in denominator we have, oh sorry, here we have dx dy. Um, and here we have integral over v f of x dx, integral over b g of y dy. These two terms cancel out. And uh, this integral must be equal to 1, of course, but uh, uh, we get here f of x. Uh, 
so uh, this is the definition of statistically uh, uh, independent events and this is uh, the central uh, notion uh, in applications of probability what we uh, I, when uh, all uh, actually all statements and some of, of probability and some of them we will discuss later on um, uh, all statements of probability are based on the uh, um, are related to statistically independent events um, and uh, in applications what when we apply probability we, what we have to do uh, we have to identify which events are statistically independent so this is the key, the key point if we are able uh, um, applying statistical reasoning uh, to in to nature to find statistically independent event events then we uh, then uh, then probability starts working. Uh, uh, then all, probabil uh, all probabilistic laws pertains to uh, sets of statistically independent events. And by the way, this uh, very recent, uh, 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 very uh, recent financial crisis, to some extent, um, was related to improper application of probability. Uh, to uh, um, uh, to this economic market, uh, you know that there are many mathematicians uh, uh, who uh, came to this uh, uh, area, actuaries, some uh, um, traders. Uh, you know that very many mathematicians moved to this area, but since they didn't have the experience, uh, they designed uh, some. Uh, um, uh, financial instruments, assuming that, uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, some economical events are in statistically independent. At first uh, sight, it uh, seemed quite, quite plausible, but uh, the practice proved different. Uh, the, uh, for example, uh, so, uh, this mortgage, mortgage loan crisis. What happened? Uh, uh, so, uh, tip, uh, uh, usually, uh, banks uh, loan mortgages. Um, they have collateral, this house, um, uh, and uh, this uh, went for years and years and years until mathematicians came, uh, and they decided, all, all right, we, we can uh, we can uh, design a new product. We collect a lot of uh, mortgage loans in one, and we will sell it to another bank or to uh, to insurance company or to uh, pension uh, fund, etc. So, so this, and what they assume that say if we take a lot of uh, mortgage loans, and we, it is natural to assume that the probability of the default of mortgage loan. Uh, of different mortgage loans are statistically independent. Therefore, when you combine uh, this uh, 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 these mortgage loans in a big chunk, uh, prob probability of default of this big chunk becomes small. And this is true, and we, we will prove this uh, uh, for statistically independent event uh, uh, in a few, uh, maybe to, well, I have another uh, half an hour, right? Uh, maybe today. Uh, but, uh, but uh, what was wrong? The assumption of statistical independence. Because when uh, mortgage loans start to default, uh, go, go, say uh, people go to bankruptcy, etc., then these events uh, uh, f mm, uh, cease to be independent. Uh, and they become dependent. And therefore all these uh, probabilistic computations of risk uh, are no longer true, uh, and uh, uh, and this uh, uh, this uh, uh, example uh, is not uh, uh, serves not only as exa uh, this is a typical example in in physics as w uh, as well. You w the most important thing when you do probabilistic model is to to try to identify what in, uh, in, in reality which events you can think of as independent events. 
Uh, all right. Now let us uh, let us indeed show that if we have, say, sum of independent events, and we make a sum, then uh, uh, then probability of such events can be easily determined by some simple uh, simple asymptotic relations. Um, so the next topic is. Um, The next topic is the sum of independent variables. So let us consider an um, independent variables. What does this mean? That means that, and let they be identically distributed. Uh, say that means that if I have the joint probability distribution of all these events, uh, it is equal to the product. Uh, uh, of the function f of x taken at the points x1 and so on, xn. Um, and um, the question we ask is the following. Suppose that we have a scalar function phi um, and we consider a sum. of this uh, form uh, and we ask mm, mm, uh, and we ask what is the probability uh, distribution uh, of uh, probability distribution of this sum um, let me see what would be more convenient to to normalize it uh, or just take it as it is um, okay let uh, um, let us put here uh, a factor one over n so uh, our task is to find probability distribution of this sum. Uh, how to proceed? Uh, if we look for probability density, uh, say let us denote uh, uh, probability density of this sum, right? Uh, f of e. Uh, that, so, so we know that this is equal to integral of uh, step function e minus 1 over n um, phi of x1 plus and so on plus phi of xn Um, f of um, and now we have to integrate over all f over all x sorry Excuse me. yeah uh, capital f of e is, is not a probability density uh, uh, this is probability distribution it is not probability you are right it is this is a probability distribution um, all right maybe it's let me use your question to uh, to say what probability density is. So this is pro, uh, probability 
distribution um, and what is probability density Uh, probability density is, uh, by definition, the derivative of probability distribution. Right. This is um, uh, this is the definition. And by the way, uh, we can uh, uh, see how to, if we look for probability density. Um, Uh, 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 how to write pr uh, probability density uh, in the form of such such an integral? Um, now I have to um, assume uh, that uh, you know the following relation. If we take the step function and differentiate it with respect to its argument, then what what do we get? I remind that step function is the function like this. This is 0, and this is 1. So this is theta as a function of e, and we take derivative of this function. What do we get? All right, de delta Dirac delta function, delta of e. Um, uh, so, if we uh, so how to write probability density? We have to differentiate uh, um, uh, differentiate this relation with respect to e, right? Um, and uh, assuming that all that this differentiation is meaningful. We have to differentiate the, uh, uh, the the limits of integration doesn't depend on e, so we have to, to differentiate only the integrant, and then in, uh, uh, instead of theta, we get here delta function of e minus one over n phi of x one plus and so on uh, dx one dxn uh, it is uh, since uh, now is it okay I miss here one bracket uh, uh, since delta function has singularity right it is easier to work with this uh, this integral because theta function is smoother uh, and uh, but uh, at the f uh, at the end when we say if we find this integral then we can get probability density just by differentiation uh, of course we can do uh, many things starting from this relation directly um, but uh, it is a bit more safe uh, to work uh, to work with this formula Uh, because of the smoothness, uh, or better smoothness of the integrand. Okay, and now, uh, okay, now we have to compute um, this integral. And how to proceed? We just use the presentation uh, for the step function we derived at the second lecture. Uh, so we, uh, uh, I remind that what we have shown was that theta of e is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral from a minus i infinity to a plus i infinity exponent e z divided by z dz and by the way what would be the presentation of delta function uh, if we if we wish to write similar presentation for delta function, and we assume that uh, we can differentiate uh, this relation formally, 
then we get delta delta of e I have to differentiate I have to differentiate this integral over e uh, and if all these differentiations could be done so you, you uh, uh, then z, the z fac, uh, then the factor z appears right which cancel out with the denominator and and we get that uh, the similar presentation for delta function is 1 over 2 pi i a minus i infinity to a plus i infinity exponent e z d z all right so let us plug uh, let us plug this to uh, to the formula for um, uh, to the formula for probability distribution. What do we get? F of E is equal to. Now, when we plug this integral we just we, we just increase uh, uh, the number of integrations and the uh, uh, and the order of integration uh, in most cases can be changed because this uh, there are uh, the uh, there are uh, mathematical theorems uh, warranting possibility of uh, change of the order of integration but the conditions are so sweet, so weak that in physical problems we usually uh, can do it without much worry um, uh, so um, uh, so what we have there 1 over z exponent e uh, now I in, instead of e I have to plug here this difference right so we get EZ minus 1 over N Z um, phi of X1 minus 1 over N Z phi of X2 and so on um, and uh, we have dz or maybe let us write first dx1 dx uh, oh sorry f of x f of x1 <coughs> f of x n um, dx1 dx n dz And now look what we achieved. Uh, this ex in this exponent, uh, in this exponent, um, we have sum. We have a sum, right? So the exponents becomes a product of functions uh, of functions of different variables. Namely, uh, so this uh, this exponent I can write as exponent to the power ez times exponent to the power minus 1 over n z phi of x1 and so on exponent minus 1 over n z phi of x n um, and I can put here this factor f of x1 I can put near uh, this first factor and uh, here f of x n near the last factor uh, and you see that we split integration over uh, all these n variables they are all these integrations are uh, collected to, uh, combined together so we can write uh, now much simpler integral integral 1 over z exponent e z times times 
and here we have a common integral to the power n e to the power min minus z over n um, phi of x f of x dx and this should be taken to the power n and then integrated over z so this is the uh, so what we have used here we have most essential uh, uh, most essential feature which we used is that these variables x1 and so on xn are statistically independent only due to that we are able to put the integral in a such simple form um, uh, and now uh, what i would like to do <coughs> is to put uh, to put this uh, integral uh, to the form suit, uh, similar uh, which would remind us Laplace uh, the integrals studied by Laplace asymptotics how to do that um, uh, first of all um, let us um, just rewrite this uh, in the following way 1 over 2 pi i integral 1 over z exponent e z plus n uh, logarithm integral exponent minus z over n phi of x f of x dx Right. Dz. And uh, so we are almost done. Now look uh, to to put this integral in the form with a large factor near uh, large factor in front of some function. What else should I do? I uh, I just change the variable z by say uh, by z n, right? Uh, if I do that, uh, if I change z by z n, uh, uh, then here n uh, um, and and here n cancel out. D z divided by z would be. Uh, D, uh, D of nu z divided by nu z, uh, and uh, and what happens here uh, then in uh, in the first term the factor n appears, and then I can take n out of brackets and I get the uh, integral which looks very like uh, um, uh, very similar to Laplace integral. May, may I suggest you to call it zeta tilde? Um, uh, instead of arrow, I can write uh, z equal to n z tilde, right? Uh, so uh, <coughs> we can uh, do that. Uh, then we get one over two pi i integral uh, integral exp one over z. But uh, so after I do that, I drop tilde. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> so we have here exponent n uh, s, and here we have some function of uh, e and z dz um, uh, dz, and. Uh, uh, what is S? S of E Z is the following function. It is um, E Z plus logarithm. I will introduce right away notation Q of Z and Q of Z uh, is the integral exponent minus Z phi of x, f of x, dx. <coughs> I 
and you see that we are uh, uh, that the, the integral we obtain is um, is uh, looking uh, looks is uh, 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 very similar to Laplace integral, but it of, but uh, it is different, of course, because now we we do integration in the complex plane, and therefore we. Uh, um, uh, 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 but uh, the the uh, uh, and uh, because of that we have to use not Laplace asymptotics, but the so-called the steepest descent method. I will uh, uh, I will uh, explain uh, uh, what it means. Uh, we will uh, use it uh, for this integral. I will just give you an idea what it uh, what it is about. Uh, so, uh, suppose we have in in a complex plane Z, we have uh, say we have some contour gamma, um, and we have integral of the let us write it in the same for, uh, in the same form exponent n s of s of z dz integral over gamma all right uh, and now uh, the, the idea of uh, the steepest descent method is to deform this contour gamma in such a way that uh, it passes the uh, the points in which derivative of this function is zero. And if we manage, now th th there is uh, just idea because there is no general uh, uh, general uh, uh, general ways to, to, uh, to do this or consider quite uh, wide class of functions of, um, etc. So in each particular integral to study each particular integral is the matter of art. Uh, so you, uh, after some uh, practicing, you may uh, uh, master in, in this stuff. Uh, but this is the idea. If we uh, manage to uh, say to, to deform this contour in, in, in such a way that it passes the point in which uh, uh, the function s of z uh, um, uh, derivative of this function is zero, and say, uh, uh, um, uh, and then uh, uh, it uh, uh, derivative of, of this function is zero. Um, uh, then it might happen that this point is either point of maximum or point of minimum, um, and then you you have to think whether this point produces the la the largest contribution to to your integral. Or not, uh, so each integral requires its uh, uh, its own investigation. In this case, we are lucky because this function actually is uh, structured very simply. Namely, uh, first of all, uh, we see that this function. Uh, let us consider this function on real axis. Uh, on real axis, this function is real. All right, and moreover, uh, 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 this function is uh, is a con convex uh, is a convex one. So on uh, on real uh, uh, axis, uh, we can, or you may wish to take it as a home exercise to prove it is quite easy to prove that uh, say uh, that if you take second derivative of this function with respect to z. Uh, for real z, uh, the second derivative is uh, non-negative, um, and therefore, if I uh, I can uh, consider the uh, I can consider the uh, graph of this function on the real axis, maybe instead of z, I uh, well, well, I still write z, z. Um, uh, then uh, this function has uh, th this function has a minimum at some point, and 
uh, then what to do? We can move uh, uh, we can move this integral. So uh, remember that we have an integral. Uh, uh, this is point A, and we have an integral in the half uh, uh, in the right half plane. So we can move this line of integration to the point of uh, to this to the point where this function has minimum. At this point, derivative. Let us uh, now let us uh, write the expansion of this function at the point of minimum. Uh, uh, so, so we, uh, we have s of e z at the point of in the vicinity of the point of minimum has the following form: s of e say z. I put here symbol check because this is point of minimum. First derivative of this function is zero. Uh, plus uh, one half second derivative of this function um, at the point of minimum uh, times the okay times the uh, deviation of z from the point of minimum squared. Right? Um, uh, second derivative is positive because this is convex function. And what is, uh, but now, uh, look, we have to integrate this function over this, uh, over uh, this line. And we, we, we uh, put uh, this line passing uh, through the point of minimum. And therefore, what would be We have to thank Francesca for that. Um, <clears throat> all right, I just uh, uh, make uh, a couple points and um, I'll, I'll finish. So <clears throat> along this line, z minus uh, z check is this vector, right? If this is the point z, this is the point z check. z minus z check is this is this vector. Uh, so z minus z check <coughs> is i y. Right? y is coordinate along this line. And if we plug it in here, we get uh, we have to put i y squared. Right? And i y squared is equal to minus y squared. So you see that s uh, and second derivative is positive because here we have minimum. Uh, so you see that this function, uh, uh, along, uh, the, uh, that when we put this contour passing through the point of minimum on a real axis, on the, uh, along this line, this uh, function has, ma has local maximum. Right? It has local maximum, and therefore uh, we can expect uh, that the asymptotics is given just by the value of uh, uh, by the asymptotics is given by the value of this uh, um, of this uh, uh, the asymptotics can be computed um, considering only the vicinity of this point the point of minimum of this function s and by the way in physical problems in physical problems s has the meaning of entropy 
and the point of this point of minimum has the meaning of inverse temperature and I don't uh, uh, you have uh, these uh, three chapters of my book and uh, so the examples are given there and I consider these lectures as an introduction to this uh, three chapters so you may uh, see how uh, 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 further, uh, further explanations in these uh, chapters but uh, all, all this stuff has some physical interpretation. Um, all right, so, uh, uh, so we see that we have to, uh, to go to the point of minimum of this function and of course we have to check this is point of local, uh, of local um, maximum but we have to check what happens far away from this point as well and, uh, uh, and this is uh, easy to see because this is logarithmic function and you can com you can compute this function far away uh, uh, from this line uh, from this point and you you will uh, you, s you will see that uh, actually um, uh, as uh, uh, decays along this line fast enough so uh, uh, so the asymptotic is uh, indeed given by computation of the integral only in the vicinity of the point of minimum of uh, function s. So the asymptotics, and, and now we can, when we integrate over this line, we can use Laplace asymptotics. So what do we get here? <coughs> we get the asymptotics is um, um, let me take this Uh, the asymptotics is when uh, now when I integrate over z, right? Uh, then I have to. <coughs> so instead of dz, I plug i dy. Therefore, this i cancel out, and what we get one over two pi. Right? Uh, w uh, this prefactor should be taken at the point of minimum of s. So we have here one over z check. Uh, then we have um, exponent n um, s uh, uh, s computed at the point of minimum, um, and the integration um, uh, integration uh, and further integration provides here some factor, uh, some factor, but uh, the the leading uh, this is what this exponent this term is the leading uh, the leading term of this uh, 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 asymptotics it de it determines what uh, it determines the behavior of probability uh, distribution and uh, now uh, note that if we take derivative uh, this is this is this computation is for prob uh, for probability distribution. If uh, to get probability density, we have to take derivative with respect to um, uh, e. Uh, but this does not change the asymptotics because when you take derivative with respect to e, then the uh, the uh, you get some factor n in, in front uh, uh, of this uh, expression, but. Uh, and derivative of s with respect to e, but uh, all uh, uh, all these factors are small compared to uh, uh, to this one. How to see that? For example, let us take this factor. We can write uh, this factor as exponent logarithm of one over z check. But for large n, it is for large n. This term is much smaller than that one. So all these factors can be ignored. This is the uh, so this is the leading term of asymptotics, and may stop at this point. And uh, uh, next time uh, we will uh, see the conse consequences of this fact. So the uh, central limit theorem, large deviation theory, um, and then we go to variational problems. Thank you.